pleasure to be here. I'm very honored. I'm overwhelmed because of your words. I met Mrs. Matai once in the World Economic Forum and we just recognized each other. Yeah. And I'm sure that we share the same values of commitment for nature and the love for the forest. Personally, I belong to a fraternity with flora and fauna. I owe to them. I'm a little piece on that tapestry. And in this life with my team, a wonderful team as committed as me, we are trying to mobilize every, every life force to protect what it's left. The global biocapacity of the planet, the old forest and the tremendous wisdom of women in the cosmic time. We may plant trees, but who is going to weave the wisdom? Not in our time. I really live in, a, in an emergency. I think we have a small time, a little time in front that we may act and protect the forest and understand who owns the forest would save us time. The forest is in the hands are in the hands of extreme poverty communities. And it is just the time to get an economic value for the ecosystem services they provide to us. We are in charge of those, of those marvelous species that are refugee Refugiados, sorry, refugee in, in the wilderness of my place. So for us, it is a goal to get those payments, to recognize the value of the ecosystem services, but more than, than anything else, to recognize who own the forest. And then maybe we could understand that the global protocols doesn't fit in the extreme poverty conditions. Let's move faster. We have years, decades, talking about how to ground these global mechanisms at the local level. It's better if we understand who owns the forest and their limitations. Because we cannot wait another decade to, to wait and see what happened. We are losing forest as an open top. Last year we lost, because of the bark beetle, 6,000 hectares of old forest. And Chihuahua lost 150,000 hectares. And that's because the, the climate change. Forests are weaker than ever. And the social pressure on them. Then it's just time to be very, very precise and bright and deep thinking. How are we going to save the old forest. When we talk about sustainable forest in my country, that is not true. I'm sure that the forest worth more standing, giving services, rather than an extreme poverty exploitation, and it's as it happens in the most of the cases. We need them, we need to preserve that biocapacity. All forests are, are our best treasure. 
and we are not acting enough fast and in an efficient way. I think that climate change is overwhelming the forest, too much pressure. So here we are to mobilize every possibility, every possibility to preserve, to restore, to recuperate by your, by your capacity. We have to weave a social answer, a small local answers, make the big wave. Restoring soils, preserving all forests, being prepared for the climate change and its effects, what is gonna come. Be a society that is moving to a different value system. Going back to more Franciscan values, simply life, and recognizing, and recognizing that we belong to the earth. We will go back to her. And we are part of that wise tapestry. And for our side and since our region, we defend that territory with everything we can. We got, we have 27 working in the region. 10 years later, we got a federal decree as a biosphere reserve. Then I became like a, a the environmental sheriff for the region for 14 years. And it was my pleasure to put the normativity on the table. Yeah. And to let the politicians and, and the local ones that there is, we had rules to fulfill. And now, after all these years, what we have gotten, it's an extraordinary social weaving, social weave, yeah, of many serranos acting at the favor of conservation, restoration, productivity, a lot of training, a lot of knowledge that we are always transferring, workshops, monitoring, technical assistance, being present everywhere. We organize 34,000 serranos every year in small duties. Yeah. Recycling, reforestation, ecotourism, conservation, tourism, weaving a, an economic development for the region based on new values. We have made in the past a lot of research, crazy, crazy because of the size, but we have measured the ecosystem services since 20 years ago. No, doing inventories in every different type of vegetation with wonderful academic institutions in my country and the water and the soil, trying to give economic value to the services of the forest. Nowadays, things are getting better in Sierra Gorda. Now it's a real income that goes to their pockets every year. And Querétaro, my state, is the first state in Mexico that has developed a local protocol, Kyoto, in the local level. At some national level, a fiscal package, a small fiscal taxes and incentives, they are adding to a subnational ecosystem carbon offset payment in my state. That's a replicable model. We are very pioneering in this. We got a gold standard through CCB and BCS protocols, and it was a very, a very labyrinthic path that I think that it's not replicable at all. It's very expensive. And so we have a lot of learning about soils, about forest conservation. And from Sierra Gorda, we are a living experience of sustainable practices. Yeah. And soon we will be replicating at national level. You know, and 
our dream will be completed then when we have more subnational mechanisms and soil regeneration in degraded lands all over Mexico and life is going to give you give us the strength and the passion that feed us because we know we know mother earth yeah and i think that it's just a time to think with our hearts and let those lovely feelings for the planet flow quien dijo que todo está perdido yo vengo a entregar mi corazón